Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Ishi, and today I'm here to talk about the best nine books I read in 2019. <laughs> this video is so late. I wasn't even gonna film one of these videos at all because I could not, for the life of me, decide which books I liked the best. I have thought long and hard about this list and here it is. This list is in no particular order, but I am saving like the best, best, best books until like the last couple ones. So we're gonna start off this list with Stardust by Neil Gaiman. I read this book for the Book Junkie Trials because it was the group book and no one liked it. <laughs> like everyone was like, oh, like this book is so bad, but I actually really loved this book. Neil Gaiman's books have always kind of been like a hit or miss for me, so I was scared getting into this, but I actually read this entire book in one sitting because I could not put it down and it went by so fast because the way the story is told is so natural, like it flows really well so you want to keep on reading. Anyways, our main character is Tristran and he is in love with this girl. And this girl says that they can be together if he goes and gets her a fallen star from the other side of the wall. And they live in this town called Wall because there is this wall and on the other side of the wall is like fairyland. Not like fairyland exactly, but it's like a magical land where humans are forbidden to go. So one night he runs across the wall to get the fallen star and he is on this journey to find the star and when he finally finds this star he finds out that the star is actually a girl and their journey is so magical the writing is so beautiful and it's written in a way that makes me believe every single thing i'm reading i feel like if i travel to the edge of the world i really will come across a town named wall and i really will meet a guy named tristran it's so good it's so magical and it's so lovely if you don't like it though then i'm really sorry but i appreciate personally really enjoyed reading this book. The next book I have on this list is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, which I have talked about multiple times in the past, so I'm sorry you have to hear it again. But this book is one of the best books I've read. It is so amazing and it is a really big book, so I was expecting it to be really slow, but I was actually into it from the very beginning. This book is a tale about how a poor orphan boy named Kavoth becomes the most notorious wizard his world has ever seen. This book is actually narrated by Kavoth. He is grown up now and he's looking back and narrating his childhood and how he came to be who he is today. And the way he narrates his life is beautiful. He's snarky, he's funny, and I love his voice as a storyteller. The magic system is really mysterious and the author doesn't really give away like anything at the start of the book. And even throughout the book, we only find out like bits and snippets of the magic system. So I'm really excited to find out more about this magic system in the next couple of books. One criticism I have, like I've said before, is I wish there were more female characters. There's only one female character and she is the love interest and she's just romanticized and she's perfect and there's like nothing about her that's flawed and I just find that to be very unrealistic so I hope that her character develops more throughout the next couple of books because if she stays the way she is now I'm going to be really disappointed but overall the story is so beautiful the writing style is amazing the pacing is really good except for this one chapter in the middle that I was just like okay this can hurry up but other than that I really love this book overall. If you are into high fantasy or if you're looking to get into high fantasy then I highly recommend reading The Name of the Wind. The next book I have is The Assassination of Brainwayne Spurge by M.T. Anderson and Eugene Yelchin. This is a middle grade book and I purchased this because the cover is so beautiful. I absolutely love how this book looks and I really did not know what it was about at the time I bought it. So this book is about Brainwain Spurge. He is from the Elven Kingdom and he's sent as an ambassador to the Goblin Kingdom. The Elven and Goblin Kingdoms are enemies and have been for years, so everyone from the Elven Kingdom just expects him to get assassinated the moment he gets there. But in the Goblin Kingdom, he is hosted by a goblin named Werfel and he basically learns how the goblins live their life. This book is told both through text and illustrations, but the illustrations are not related to the text at all. This is actually a dual perspective book and the illustrations are from Brainwain's point of view and the text is the goblin Werfel's point of view. 
I thought that was really creative and I loved looking through all the illustrations and it's middle grade so it's a pretty fast read and I really liked it and I feel like I will probably reread it again in the future. The next book I read is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr which has been on my TBR since high school and I finally got around to it and I'm so happy about it. This book follows a blind French girl and a German boy whose lives collide in occupied France during World War II. We follow the girl from the age of 10 until she's older and her father and her had to flee their hometown once World War II starts. And I loved reading from her perspective because she's blind so a lot of her descriptions were stuff she feels or stuff she hears and I thought it was really beautiful the way it was written. And the boy is an orphan and he has always been a genius when it comes to technology so he's really good at like radios and fixing things so he is recruited by the Nazi army from like a very young age. So fascinating but also terrifying at the same time the way they brainwash these children and we see the two of their stories kind of headed in the same direction and you're wondering are they gonna meet in real life and I loved reading this. Everything that happens is really gradual so you don't really see things changing that much but at the end you're looking back and you're like when did all this happen? I highly recommend this book, really impactful, sad and just like such a powerful story and beautiful characters. Please read it if you haven't already. Next, I have Illuminae by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I have talked about this book so many times and this might not be the last time. I'm so sorry, but this book is amazing. Our story follows Katie and Ezra who have just broken up and they are at school when their planet is attacked and they have to work together to escape the planet. The majority of the story takes place in spaceships and obviously resources are limited so they have to work together to make sure everything functions well and there is like an artificial intelligence called Aiden who is basically a character and I love him. All the characters are so well developed which I find is amazing considering the fact that this book is not written like a traditional novel, like it's told through emails and graphics. So even though the book was never narrated normally by a character, I feel like I still knew all the characters so well. I love the storyline, I love all the characters and this book is just amazing. I love all the images and the graphics. I feel like the Illuminae Files are a series that I will read again and again in the future. It is definitely one of the best I've read this year. The next book I have is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Our story follows Victor and Eli who are roommates in university and for their final thesis they are exploring EOs which are extraordinary people with extraordinary abilities and they find out that when people have like a near-death experience they come back to life with kind of like a new power. So they start doing experiments and research in this field and things go wrong. I love Victor. He as a character is so like well developed and he's so fascinating. There's so many things about him that I find to be very unique. Like he's not a good guy, but he's our main character, but he's not like a villain either. It's very interesting to see how he interacts with like other people. I don't like Eli at all. I just hated him. He was so like, <laughs> but he also is a very well developed character. Like neither of these characters are bad people. Everything they do, they do from like an inherently good place in their heart but they can be considered like villains as well. So that's why I really love this book because there's no typical chosen one beats the villain story. Like I find all the dynamics between all the characters really interesting. The plot is amazing. So this book takes place over like a large period of time and there are time skips and obviously we change point of view. So it's all really interesting but it all flows very well together. Like it's not choppy at all. And I just love all the concepts that this book brings forward. Next I have Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first high fantasy book I have ever read in my life. There's so much going on in this book that I don't really think I can explain well but I will try my best. Our main character is Ciri and she's the younger of two siblings and she's a princess. She is sent off to another kingdom to marry their god king. So basically in this world people who die as heroes are 
brought back to life as gods. And the magic system is really interesting because everyone has breaths and the more breaths you have, the more powerful you are and the more color you can see. So this kingdom where Siri is from, nothing is really colorful, like everyone just sees muted colors versus this other kingdom she goes to, like the god king and all the other gods have a lot of breaths because people give them breaths and they can see a lot of color. This city is very vibrant and it's all just very interesting. I love Siri. I love the God King. I think they're very well-developed characters and Siri has a sister named Vivenna. I absolutely hated her. Like she was so annoying in the beginning, but by the end she actually became one of my favorite characters. And I feel like that says a lot about the type of character development she went through. And it also says a lot about how amazing Brandon Sanderson is. The world building is breathtaking. Like this world is so vast, so real. Like it's so amazing the amount of detail that Brandon Sanderson has put into this world. World. I also love reading about court politics. So when Siri is married off to the God King, she's obviously like in his court. So I loved seeing how she interacted with the different people in this court. And I just love reading about like politics and like internal conflict in the court of a king. So it was all very interesting. I highly recommend if you are venturing into high fantasy, this is definitely the book to start with. Also Name of the Wind. Both are so good. The next book I have is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I read this only because of the hype and the hype did not disappoint. This book is so good. So there's a journalist and she has been chosen to write a biography for this really famous Hollywood actress named Evelyn Hugo who used to be very famous like back in the day but now she's old and doesn't really like interact much with the press. So the fact that she has finally decided to tell her story is a big thing. So we follow Evelyn Hugo from the time she's like 18 and just starting show business until when she's like really famous and she has seven husbands throughout her life. So we just learn all the drama, everything that made her who she is. The best thing about this book was definitely Evelyn Hugo as a character, like amazing, a masterpiece. The way Taylor Jenkins writes this character is so real. Evelyn Hugo feels so real to me and I'm so disappointed that she's not actually a person. It is probably one of the most impactful books I've read this year. It absolutely wrecked me. I was crying. If you have not read this book, what are you doing? Please listen to the hype and read this book. The last but definitely not the least is The Secret History by Donna Tartt, which is the best book I have ever read in my life. This book follows a friend group who have murdered someone in their friend group and throughout the book we are trying to find out why they did it and how they did it, what led up to the events and what happened after. Our main character is Richard Papin and we are kind of reading his diary so everything we read through his perspective is very biased. He basically romanticizes this group of friends, he thinks they're perfect so when he slowly starts to find out that these people are not actually perfect we also start to see the cracks in all the characters' facades and the character development is so well done and so subtle. Like throughout the whole story, we can see how Richard changes his views about these other characters. So then we also start to change what we think about these other characters as well. It is so well done. None of these characters are perfect. Like all of them are kind of terrible people but the way they are written is so real like they're not just terrible for the sake of being terrible they are who the world has made them and I just find their stories to be very interesting and if you don't know already I am trash for dark academia so that is another thing that added to my love for this book I'm not gonna lie though it is a very hard book to read like the sentences are really long there's lots of commas and you have to put in considerable amount of time to read this book it took me an entire month like it's not just something you can sit and read for 10 minutes and then like go. You have to give yourself an ample amount of time to sit there and read this. But the writing is so beautiful. The foreshadowing is crazy. Like you're reading things in the beginning and then you're reading things in the end and then you're like... It's amazing. I highly recommend you at least try this book out. If it's not for you, I understand because it's like, it's hard to get into. I know I've actually tried reading this book multiple times in high school, but I just couldn't do it. So I'm so glad that I finally did it and it has become my favorite book. Like hands down, my favorite book 
in my life. So those are the best books I read last year. If any of these are on your list, let me know. And if you've read any of them, talk to me about them. Anyways, my name is Ishi. Thank you for spending time with me and I hope your day is as wonderful as you are.